Why do some people succeed while others fail? What makes them so different? So your life really depends on how you look at the world. What do you see? If you don't like your story, just change it. It's that easy. Our next speaker, Chris Doe, is an award-winning, Emmy award-winning designer, director, strategist, lecturer, consultant, and entrepreneur. For the last two decades, he has run the Santa Monica-based motion design and branding agency, Blind, working for iconic brands such as Nike, Xbox, Sony, and Honda. He also founded The Future, an online content and education platform. Please welcome Chris Doe. Hello, hello, hello! So good to see you guys. All right, let's kick this up a little bit. That was a lot of energy and I don't know why, but I'm feeling a little thirsty right now. Put this down. I've been told I have 30 minutes. 30 minutes, let's, let's see how we do. Ooh, my slide's already moving. Okay, what are we gonna talk about today? All right, here we go. I'm used to doing a very long live stream, so 30 minutes is a crunch for me. And this is a version of my two hour mini workshop and we're gonna just bang it out in 30 minutes. So I might talk a little bit fast and if I do, I'm gonna warn you right now, you probably wanna get your cell phones out because we're gonna fly through this. I'm Asian, we do things on time, all right? <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, woo! All right, I can't even see you, the lights are so bright. Your future's bright, okay. I wanna let you guys know about this big, hairy, audacious goal that I have, which is to teach and impact one billion lives on planet Earth. And I understand there's 1,400 of you guys here, so hopefully if I do my job, I can take 1,400 from that one billion. Okay, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to be really addressing mindset and belief systems. I'm not gonna show you my portfolio, there's no process here, but I'm gonna to try to share with you some of the things I've learned in coaching so many people across this great world. Question for you to think about. Why do some people succeed while others fail? What makes them so different? And a lot of times we think it must be because they were born with it, or maybe it was Maybelline, <laughs> right? Or could it just be something else? Now as a teacher, it doesn't help me to believe that you're born with it. So I have to believe that you must be able to learn this. So I'm gonna start it off with a story. And this is a true story. And the events described in this talk took place over the internet, where most of my conversations happen. The names have been changed, sort of. And out of respect for you, the rest is told exactly as it occurred. This is a story not about a woman named Carrie. She's a mom. She lives on a farm in South Carolina. She studied mechanical engineering. She's a self-taught designer and she's the primary income earner for her family. And Carrie is somebody I befriended on the internet and I was coaching her. And she kept telling me, Chris, I can't seem to bill more for websites than $8,000. So she was hitting her glass ceiling. And I said, you can charge more. She goes, no, you don't understand. I work with influencers and experts and coaches and authors and they just don't value design. I've tried and tried and they just, it's $8,000. So here's the good news about this story is that I coach and teach a lot of people. So I meet this other person, his name, not Benny, but I talk to Benny and Benny does the exact same thing for the exact same market, but Benny charges somewhere between 20 to $50,000. I knew it. I knew it, she was lying to me all this time. So I call up Carrie again. I said, Carrie, you know, I met this gentleman he does exactly what you do. So he charges way more than you. And she goes, it's not possible. What's his name, what's his website? And she searches on the internet, she looks it up. She goes, dang it, it is exactly the same. So I leave Carrie alone for a little while to think about this. And I told Carrie, Carrie, I've been talking to you for a really long time now. I don't know why it is that you haven't implemented anything that I've taught you so far. I think I'm wasting my time. This is the tough Asian dad love thing going on here. I say to her, if you're not willing to change, I think I need to move on. I, I gotta spend time with somebody else and I'm gonna teach somebody else. She goes, Chris, please, please don't give up on me. I can do this. So what Carrie does in the very next call is she summons up the courage to ask for more money. 
And I'm going to fast forward in the story a little bit. About six months later, she told me she already billed more in the six months than she did the entire previous year. So what was different? This is what I asked her. What was different? What changed? She goes, I don't know what you mean. I said, well, did you change your landing page? Did you write new case studies? Did you rebrand? Did you say anything different? She goes, no, nothing's different. I said, no, something is different. Your belief in what is possible has changed. And that's all it takes. I know it's hard for some of you to hear this because I do teach a lot of people how to find their value in the marketplace. But the thing that you need to do is to believe and then do it. That's the secret formula. I love this quote from Marcus Aurelius. Our life is what our thoughts make it. It is so true. So today, six points. I want to dive in. First one is belief systems. And this is normally a workshop. So there's parts to this that you just have to imagine us working together and me getting a response from you, but that's not possible. Okay, so we'll, we'll try to do this, okay? So here's how the cycle works. And there's five spokes to this wheel. What you think is what you say. And what you say is what you wind up doing, right? And what you do becomes your behavior. Your behavior becomes your identity. And so it goes on and on and on in a circle. And before you know it, your life has fallen into a groove. And you know how this works on the needle. The longer you play the track, the deeper the groove gets, the harder it is to move the needle from the track. So what we have to do is to examine our belief system. Why do you believe what you believe? And do you believe it to be true? Examine them. And I'm going to tell you this little story. It's called the monkey ladder experiment. Some scientists got five monkeys together in a room, and they put a ladder. And at the top of the ladder, they put a bunch of bananas. And each time a monkey went for the banana, the whole group got doused with cold water. And over time, no monkeys would climb up the ladder. And then they removed one monkey at a time, so they introduced one new monkey. And when that monkey went up to go for the bunch of bananas, the four remaining monkeys beat him down. So he too also learned not to go for the bunch of bananas. And then he slowly swapped out one monkey until all the monkeys had never been doused with water. And none of them went for the bunch of bananas. So this is what I talk about when I talk about your belief system and examining it. And maybe another way to examine your belief system, if you don't like the results that you're getting, is to rethink what your belief system is. That's just your BS. So we're going to hit Command Escape. We're going to start over. And what we need to do is to do something to shock your system so that we can disrupt these patterns. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about input and output. God, that clock is killing me. I'm looking at that thing over there. Okay, so let me ask you guys a true or false question, okay? Do you get out of life what you put into it? True or false? Okay, thank you. That's how we do. It's like a bunch of designers, very quiet. So true, you get out of life what you put into it, right? Okay. Well, look at this, input, output. It seems to make sense. But what I want to do is to interrupt this and insert one critical step that you may not be aware of, and that is interpretation. Input, and depending on how you look at things, determines your output. Okay, so I'm going to put this image up. I don't want you to say anything yet, but when I say, please tell me what you think, how would you describe this glass? Okay, what are you guys saying? Okay, and any half empties in this room? Come on. <laughs> Come on, you guys. It's like 90% of the room, please. Let's be honest with each other. Okay. So some of you guys said half full, but you're thinking, Chris is going to trick us. He told us to think positively, you know, re-examine our belief system. Be optimistic. What's that? It's half, water. it's half water, right? So half full, half empty. Or could it just be a glass of water? <laughs> could it just be a glass of water? Right? So we have to kind of think, like, what is real? And we think real reality is all the same, and in fact, it's not. There's this thing which you believe to be real, which is just really subjective individual reality. And sometimes that rubs up against object, objective physical reality. So your life really depends on how you look at the world. What do you see? So let's re-examine this same flowchart again. 
Your input, depending on the interpretation, has an infinite number of outputs. Right? So if you want to be angry, you will find a way to be angry. And if you want to feel hurt, you will find a way to feel hurt. I just happen to choose to be happy. That works much better for me. So I've developed a belief system that lifts me up, that reminds me that when I fall down, it's okay, and that everything is a work in progress, and I have something to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna put you guys to the test right now, okay? What do you see? Just look at this for a second. What do you see? Just read this in your mind. And most people who read this will feel a little bit angry. And why does this make you angry? Somebody will say, well, that's unfair to women. And some will say, that's unfair to men. Because your answer totally depends on where you put the comma. So here we go. We'll read it now with a comma in place. Woman without her man is nothing. And it's, a, it's how a lot of us read this. Now, if we put another comma in here, woman without her, man is nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. All right, see? Yeah, okay, I like this crowd. You guys are good. I can't see you, but thank you. I appreciate it. It was so quiet back there. I was scared. I was scared out of my mind. It's like, I, I'm going to go back to, to the west side. Forget this. Okay, part two. Part two. Ooh, I need to hurry up. Okay, storyteller. Storyteller, okay? Here's the thing about human beings. We're just not comfortable with not knowing. So when we don't know things, we just make things up. We assign meanings to things, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? And we've been doing this for a really long time. We've had a lot of practice. Back when we were cave dwellers, there would be a fire and we'd stand around there, get warm, protect ourselves from danger, and make up stories about like angry gods in the sky shooting lightning bolts down or giant titans holding up the clouds with their back, or why when fire and smoke come out of the top of the mountain, it's something else. So we love stories, and that's cool, and we can use this to our advantage. But I want to ask you this question here. Does the story you tell yourself match what others say about you? And not just anybody, a very specific somebody, somebody who loves you, who supports you, who's loyal, who wants to see you succeed, Maybe a best friend, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a parent, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, somebody? Do those things line up? Does what your best friend think about you line up with you? Or is it a little bit different? And why is that? So what we need to do is we need to learn to see ourselves for the way others see us already. They see us as smart, as generous, talented, honest, supportive, inspirational, maybe even heroic. Maybe if you don't have a best friend, maybe try to see yourself like this guy sees you. <laughs> you could do no wrong. All you need to do to be perfect is to come home and let him out sometimes. <laughs> okay? So, I'm, as you can tell, I'm fond of drawings and charts and diagrams. That's the way my brain thinks. So I hope in doing so, it helps you think of things in a more simplistic way. So what others see, you could choose to say that that's the real me. Or you can choose to say, well, I don't deserve that. That isn't me. I don't know why they say those nice things about me. Okay? So I'm going to give you three prompts here. Now, normally we would do this together. You would tell me your answers. I would make fun of you. That's how it goes. Okay? So here are the three prompts. Three things about my physical appearance people compliment me on are what? And just write those down. What do other people say? They're probably a better judge anyway, so we should trust them. Three traits, talents, and skills people admire me for. What are those? You have gifts. You're doing things. You're going places. And here's the last one. Three ways I express generosity, the way I give to others without expectations. So here's what we know about stories. If you don't like your story, just change it. It's that easy. Fill it instead of with negativity and pessimism and dogma, fill it with hope, optimism, dare I say love? I want to tell you a story about my two boys. One of them is here with me today. One of them is super confident, almost invincible. The other one needs a little help, and his name is Matthias. And so I see this boy, and I 
my heart aches for him because he's not always so confident. He doesn't believe in himself. And the reason why I understand this is because I see myself looking back at me. So Matthias and I developed little games to help him make him more resilient, happier, to reinterpret the world in a way that's advantageous for him. So here's the first game that we play. It's called Word Jitsu. It's like jujitsu, but we do it with words. Okay? Word Jitsu, you know, juxtaposition. Okay. All right. So what are limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs, okay? The lens. Let's reinterpret this. Limiting beliefs are just lies we tell ourselves. That's what a limiting belief is. So there's all these words that have great power over us, that cripple us, that prevent us from asking that beautiful person out, or for asking a boss for a raise, or a review, or a client for a little bit more money. And I want to take away their power. I want to strip them of their power. I want to neuter the words. <laughs> okay, no animals will harm making this. It's just Photoshop, guys. Just Photoshop, relax. Creative Cloud, okay, got it. All right, so again, here's that same input model, right? Through our interpretation, through our mind, through our subjective individual reality, do we want to see something that empowers us or disempowers us, that lifts us up or tears us down? We get to decide. So I coach a lot of young people, and something that I realize is there's all the gray, everything's graduated. Nothing's like just totally good and nothing's totally bad. So they live in this murky middle area. So for this one thing, just to preserve your own brain and your, your, your mental health, just think a little bit more binary. Is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Does it empower me or does it disempower me? And see what happens, okay? So impossible can just be reinterpreted as I'm possible. So every time somebody tells you that's impossible, like you'll never build an online community and teach hundreds of thousands of people at the same time. It says you. Watch me. Fail. Fail is a very powerful crippling word for many of us. It prevents us from taking a start even. Well, isn't fail just a first attempt in learning? And what about no? A door closes? It's not the end. It's just time for your next opportunity. How about fear? Oh, that's a big one. More people do less because of fear. Fear could be a fantasized experience appearing real. It hasn't happened yet. Don't give it the power. Pain. What could pain mean? Maybe pain is necessary for good things. It could be the precursor to anything notable. So let's do one last one. You've seen this chart 100,000 times probably. This is the comfort zone, and you know that's where the magic happens. And we like to stay inside the comfort zone. So what can safe mean? So we've been taking negative words and making them positive. What if we took a positive word and made it negative, so you don't want to be safe anymore? Well, safe could be simply always following everyone. Now, who wants to be safe here? OK, good, then this is working. Safe could be stay average forever. If you want to insult a designer, just tell them, your work is the average. <laughs> and those of you guys that signed up for my portfolio critique, be prepared. Be prepared. OK. Point number four, reaction. Reaction, OK? When you have undesired outcomes, when bad things happen to you, you have to start to flip these things around. So I've been asking my son to say this, is to say when everything, something bad happens, say congratulations. Congratulations, you failed. Congratulations, and then find one reason why this could be exciting news for you and explain to yourself why. How could this become a learning opportunity for you? Well, for me, I'm not afraid of the word failure because I know failure is the tuition I pay for future success. That's it. Every time I fail, I'm like, that's the lesson I needed to learn. I lost $30,000. That was a powerful lesson. <laughs> that was the beginning to a graduate degree. Okay? So when you're exhausted and you lack energy, just say to yourself, instead of beating yourself up, congratulations, you put in a good day's worth of work today. You're not motivated, uninspired, congratulations. You need to find your true calling. You've been let go. Congratulations. Time to find something better for you. Something was holding you back. And most of the times when you get a new job, you get a raise. Okay, last one. You are alone. Congratulations. 
Time to finish off that book list. Okay, now this is something I go around the country and the world teaching people. And then I'm tested every once in a while, like, is this just BS? Is this my own belief system projecting it onto others? And can I do this myself? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a really quick story about my son, the confident one. He's taking Latin for the first time. He's a super bright kid. And one day I come home, and my wife is there, and she's like, look at this. And when your wife says something like that to you, you do not want to look at it. Trust me. <laughs> Nothing good is going to come from this. I look at it, and I'm like, what is this? It's your son's test results from Latin. Can you believe it? I asked him earlier, how is he doing in Latin? He said, I'm doing fine, Mom. He got a 15 on his test. I'm like, 15 out of what? 15 out of 25? What are we talking about? She goes, no, 15 out of 100. 15 out of 100. And I was overcome with emotions. I was sitting here thinking, I need to respond and deal with this because my wife wants me to be the disciplinarian. I have to be the bad guy. You know, I work all the time. I got to come home and be the bad guy now. And I was just thinking, like, I'm hearing my dad's voice creep up in my head. I'm hearing it really loud. And just for all you, got, all you non-Asians, let me just tell you what 15 means. Okay? <laughs> this is the Asian grading scale. Okay? I know, there's a lot of white people here. This is for you guys, all right? Okay? A is average. Okay? It has to be better than A. B is bad. C is you can't eat dinner. I mean, I've had to forge my report cards before when I got a C, trust me, all right? D is like, there's not even a D, it doesn't even exist. Don't come home or find a new family, okay? <laughs> and I was trying to channel, like, how can I find the positive in this? How can I flip this situation around in my mind? And I said to her, have you taken Latin before? She goes, no. I have, in college, much older than him. It was very, very difficult. I had to drop that class. Here's the way I look at it. He got 15. Right. <laughs> right? He got 15 right. How many more words of Latin does he know more than you? A lot. <laughs> and then I could see that anger in her. The, 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 the tiger mom was like, huh, put her claws away. You're, you're right. Maybe it's okay. I was like, shoot, I didn't want to go upstairs and tell my son he's a bad kid. This is like me and Neil, like dodging bullets, right? That's what I'm doing. So I go upstairs. He's in his room, totally oblivious to this whole conversation. I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's okay, Dad. I heard you got a 15. Yeah. Keep it up. <laughs> Keep it up. And then you know what? In a few short months, he's acing every single test. And now he's in his second or third year of Latin, and psh, that's a really difficult language. Okay, I'll give you another one. This one's pretty funny. That clock is killing me. God is a designer. God is a designer. I'm not even religious. I'm wearing a hat. It's a conversation starter. God is a designer. And I want to make these hats, right? Just so happens in my inbox, I get this email. We can help you, this totally unsolicited email, I get these all the time, we can help you with cut and sew products like snapback hats. It's almost like they're reading my mind. We can turn around in 25 days, amazing. Wow, so I send him my designs, not my designs, it's a collaboration project, I send him designs and he gets right back to me. He's like, you know what, we can get these done really fast, send us a deposit for 100 bucks. I'm like, boom, let's rock and roll, I want these hats made right now. Money sent, okay, money sent. And then I'm replaying the conversation in my mind as I'm in the shower, okay? PayPal account is hotmail.com. Like, who uses hotmail? And the website is wellsucceed.com? Like, what? I'm in the shower. I'm not feeling good right now. I'm telling you. I'm not feeling good. Here's the kicker. Look at who sent it to me. Fish you. I'm like, fish you? Fish you? I'm in the shower. I'm like, thank you. Fish, fish. You know, it's a cybercrime kind of thing, right? And you know how ballsy this person is? He told me I'm gonna fish you. And $100 is not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, right? But I was thinking, what a fool. And my wife, she said, I told you watch out for these cyber criminals. And there you go, you just sent them the money. Fish you, fish me. And in that moment, I was like, congratulations, Chris. Congratulations, you fool. What can you do about this thing, right? And I was like, oh, kind of find your moment. And I was thinking, wouldn't this make an excellent post 
on social media? Like, how can you pay for that kind of story? That's worth a hundred bucks. So by the time I'm telling off, fish me, fish me. That's right, we got this, right? And I go tell the guys at the office, like, Chris, this is a good story. We can't find out what's going to happen. It turns out it's totally legitimate, but whatever. The story worked anyways, right? Either way, I win, you see? I like to design my life so legitimate, I win. Illegitimate, I still win even more. Or I win both ways. Hey, I'll take it all. Okay, point number five. Whew, I'm making up for time. Okay, incomplete sentences. I used to teach storyboarding. And there's this concept called retroactive storytelling, that the true meaning of a story is never revealed until the very end. A classic one is Sixth Sense. Yeah? I see dead people, right? I see dead people. And in the end, it's like, oh my God, Bruce Willis has been dead the whole time. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry. Right? So what we want to do is take the negative input in our life and just change it just ever so slightly so it's either neutral to positive. So if you say to yourself, I can't draw like that, I can't draw like that yet. If I charge that much, the clients will think that I must be better than the competition. I'm not who the client would typically consider for something like this. It's not in my portfolio. Well, lucky for them, I don't do work that looks typical. Okay? So I love this line from Sean Arker, Acor, TED speaker. The lens through which your brain views the world shapes your reality. Change the lens. Change your happiness, change every single outcome at the same time. Okay, we're about to get deep now, you guys. I saved the deep part for this part. Warning, some of you may cry. Okay, we're gonna just take the energy level down a little bit. I wanna ask you guys this question. Whose voice is that you hear inside your head? This is a question my therapist asked me. It's like, duh, sounds just like me. It's me, it's Chris, I know it's Chris. And then through a little bit of a little therapy, I'm like, oh, oh my God, okay, who's that stranger in my house? So I wanna share this quote with you from the Dalai Lama. Whatever brings disaster or harm should be called an enemy. So the ultimate enemy is actually within ourselves. And I'm browsing through a used bookstore and I see this title and the title is screaming out to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, conquer your critical inner voice. Conquer your critical. I think a lot of people I know need this book. I need to read it. And so I learned some things about the way our brains work. Is that most of us, as a very young person, develop certain self defense mechanisms to cope. That we internalize the angry parent. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's both. But it's almost always. This is very common with the kids that the psychiatrist works with, Dr. Firestone. That we feel rejection, neglect, or hostility, and we start to internalize this dialogue, and we develop a system to survive. The armor protects us. It gets us through childhood. But what happens is the armor becomes really heavy into our adulthood. Imagine literally right now, if you had to carry around an 80-pound suit of armor everywhere you went, to the bathroom, to the stage, it would be really difficult to live your life. And there's something else that we learn too. When we discover death somewhere between three and seven, that we now learn never to fully invest in our lives. Like, why should we? And then we don't attach to other people. And so it creates negative moods. We self-sabotage. And you know what we do when we get angry at other people. It's usually because we're angry inside about ourselves. So here's what I want you to do. Take out that imaginary piece of paper you don't have. <laughs> Divide it into three even columns. Okay, and we're gonna do a little exercise together. You're gonna to wanna to do this. I've shared it with people over the phone and they're almost in tears. Here, here's how we do it, okay? You have this critical voice, the one that attacks you. I want you to write down as many things as you can in the first person. I want you to write them down as I statements. You wanna maybe put on some music, have a glass of wine, your adult beverage, you know, and just sit there and write for 15 minutes. You wanna time this because you want to get past the surface answers. And you want to write as much as you can without judgment. I, I, I this. What are all those voices? I'm not good enough. I'll never do it right. I'm, I'm lazy. I'm, I'm whatever it is. You write that down. And then in the second column, you're going to transfer this over and you're going to write this in the third person as you statements. 
So if you say, I'm not good at this, you're going to now say, you are not good at this. And after you write them all down, what you need to do is you need to read them out loud. You need to read them aloud, okay? And then you need to feel it and hear it and feel it. Usually what happens is this little revelation moment happens. You start to identify that voice now is not your own. So who do you associate with saying this to you? And most often, it will be one of your parents. So what this exercise allows us to do is to create separation between the voices that we have in our head, our true voice and the critical voice. And it brings awareness to it so that we can make a decision now, do we want to listen to this voice or not? And then what I want you to do in the third column is to rewrite it in your true voice, the real me, the one that's nurturing, loving, compassion, and supportive, the I statements back again, okay? This allows you to recognize, to choose, and then to interpret it differently. I'll give you a couple of quick examples. The light's flashing, I get it. Here's example number one. And this is my own, okay? I'm being vulnerable here with you guys, all right? I'm a really slow reader. You are a really slow reader. You should work harder and be more like your cousin. It's my mom. I love my mom. Everything's good. I'm just letting you know how this works. It's like, what, what, what is the true voice? What does it really mean? I need to find something better in there. Well, I read slowly because I absorb more of what I read. It's what makes me a good teacher. Here's another example, okay? I don't deserve the followers I have on Instagram. I don't know why people follow me. You are really inconsistent and don't deserve the followers you have. And then the true voice, the one that's compassionate, Despite not being consistent, people find my content and story inspiring. Okay, we're almost here at the end. So I want to have you guys try this out too. This is the extra part here. Is I want you to try to think about how your critical voice dictates what you do at social functions, at a new business meeting, public speaking, when you have a client that's underwhelmed or angry, when you're budgeting work. Write them down. And then try to write it using the real you. What would you do if you weren't afraid, if you weren't judging yourself, and if you were supportive? See what happens, okay? And tell me later. Tag me on social media. So here's the summary. If you don't like your life, you don't like the story, that's your belief system, your BS, change it. Write a new story full of hope, optimism, and love. And start practicing wujitsu. Take any word that has power over you and make it into a game to turn it, to twist it, to bend it, to reshape it to your reality. Because we know, we know you like to tell stories, right? When anything bad happens, say congratulations and try to figure out something positive from it, a learning opportunity. And to know that no matter what happens, the ending has been written and you can change it. Go through the critical voice and find your true voice. I have one last thing, one last thing here for you. And you guys have heard this expression before, dress for the job you want, not the job you have, right? Everybody's heard this? Well, we do it for clothing. Why don't we do it for our mind? So I'm gonna ask you guys, everybody here who works for somebody who doesn't have their own business, to take out your business card. Take out your business card. All right, everybody, I know you guys are all in house here. I know AIJ, come on guys. Everybody reach for something, come on. You work for somebody, right? I want you to take out your card, okay? And whatever title it says on your card, borrow a pen from somebody near you, next to you, talk to me later, we'll do it together, okay? Take out a big old fat pen and cross out your title. I don't care what it says, associate, creative director, general manager, whatever it says, I want you to cross it out and I want you to write the word partner. And I want you to act as if until one day, the people who are running the business sees you as one. What do partners do? They show up, they're accountable. They look for challenges, they never wait. I want that for you, okay? Thank you very much, you guys. Resources? All right, thanks very much, you guys. Woo! 
lot of times I try to envision reaching out to just a small group of people. They say that if you can impact the life of one person within this conference of 1,400 people, you've done something wonderful. And that was really awesome. They were applying what it is that I taught. Some of that message cut through and they're able to walk away with something that they can use and apply for the rest of their life. And being able to do that just made me feel just incredible, just through the roof.